Welcome. We have been subject to a series of huge snowstorms this winter. It was the same story last year. What's going on? In Washington DC where I live we've had three record-breaking snowstorms in just six weeks from December 2009 to February 2010. Here are some pictures of my backyard. Pretty impressive, isn't it? But do these pictures really ring the death knell of global warming? We've all heard the stories on TV claiming that these storms disprove the global warming theory. All right, it's official. 2010, the snowiest winters ever in Baltimore, Maryland, in Washington, D.C. I think that's Philly on the left side of your screen, and all show we've showed you the Al Gore book and Inconvenient Truth sitting outside of studios here at Fox, taking on more and more snow in this 2010 um, blizzard. Some pro-oil and coal politicians mock global warming, using these storms to bolster their case. Oklahoma Republican Senator and vocal global warming skeptic James Inhofe used the winter wonderland to have a little fun at the expense of climate activist Al Gore. Inhofe posted on Facebook photos of his family building an igloo, igloo near the Capitol with a sign that read, Al Gore's new home. We've all seen the YouTube videos and photographs showing people's backyards in Texas, Florida and South Carolina, all covered with unusual snowfalls. But how do massive snowstorms, or for that matter any snowstorm, disprove the anthropogenic global warming theory? Well, let's find out. To get to the bottom of this, we need to understand how water cycles through our climate and how changes in temperature affect the process of creating snow. But we must remember in all of this that global warming has only added one degree to our temperatures so far. This is much smaller than day-to-day, month-to-month and year-to-year -year natural changes in temperature. So let's begin with looking at the water cycle, or is it sometime known the hydrologic cycle? Water is stored in the oceans, lakes, rivers and land. As the sun heats each of these, their temperature increases and the warm air rising from them takes water vapour up with it. That creates clouds as moist air rises to a temperature according to its dew point. Winds carry the clouds long distances where they meet high ground, updrafts or weather fronts that make them rise further and become precipitation. If the temperatures are mild, that precipitation will fall as rain. If the temperature is near or below freezing, it will fall as ice or snow. The water then makes its way back to the rivers, lakes and oceans, ready to start the cycle all over again. How do increasing temperatures affect this process? First, the warmer the temperature, the more moisture will be evaporated into the air, and the faster that air will rise. So one of the effects of global warming will be to put more water into the air, and thus we will expect more precipitation as a result. As the temperature and pressure drops with altitude, the air can't hold so much water, and it will want to condense into fine droplets. So as the moisture-laden air rises, both the temperature and pressure will force it to want to unload its excess moisture. However, nothing will happen to the water vapour as the temperature and pressure drop unless there is dust in the air. Dust particles act as condensation centres, accumulating water molecules until a droplet forms. Dust comes from forest fires, volcanic eruptions, pollen from flowers, human pollution, and interestingly, from the ash of burned up meteors, at least at the highest altitudes in the atmosphere. Once the droplet gets heavy enough, it will start to fall, and it will rain. At freezing point, the air can hold up to 5 grams of water in a cubic metre, which is not very much. But increase that temperature by just 1 degree, and the same volume can hold nearly 7% more moisture. Increase it by 10 degrees and it will hold twice as much water vapour in the same volume. Below freezing point, the situation becomes much more complicated, and so perhaps we should leave that for another day. But suffice it to say that even freezing air can hold some humidity. Not much, but some. However, there is a competing effect. The more global warming means temperatures will be less often below freezing. So combining these, we should see heavier snowstorms, but less often. Let's take a look at the typical winter temperatures in the DC area, and how much of a difference 1 degree Fahrenheit increase in temperature would make, and when it would be most effective. Here is a plot of the actual daily temperatures in Washington DC from November 2008 through March 2009. 
This was a relatively warm period, being the 8th warmest boreal winter on record, but it will do to illustrate our point. The blue curve is the low temperature and the red is the daytime high temperature. The green indicates freezing point. You can see in December, January and February temperatures were at or below freezing most of the time. So if precipitation occurred, it would more likely fall as snow or ice. Here is the same curve but with the effect of global warming removed. Not much change, is there? The greatest effects will be in November and March, where temperatures will be nearer freezing, so we would expect fewer November and March snowstorms. There are a couple more effects that we should consider. Lake effect snows and the strength of storms. Lake effect snow occurs when cold winds sweep across a body of water, like the Great Lakes, pick up moisture and then dump it in the form of snow when the moisture laden air encounters higher ground on the other side of the lake. How does temperature affect this process? Higher temperatures mean that the lake does not freeze so soon or so completely. Thus there is more water available to supply the cold front with moisture resulting in more snow. Similarly, warmer ocean temperatures make for larger storms. A large storm sweeps up more moisture. In the case of the eastern seaboard, a winter nor'easter will sweep up more moisture from the Atlantic Ocean and dump more precipitation on the coastal areas. If the temperatures there happen to be at or near freezing, as is often the case during the winter months, then you get a snowmageddon event, just like those we have experienced here the last couple of years. And so these huge snowstorms are not proof that global warming is a myth. In fact, it is the reverse. It is consistent with the global warming predictions. It will continue to be that way until global temperatures have risen several more degrees, and so the snow window will get ever narrower. That will take a long time. I hope this little video has helped you understand why isolated snow events don't disprove global warming and shows that those claiming this to be the case are trying to dupe you. I have also made a global warming quiz that you might find fun to take. The links to it and to the answers are listed in the description below. Keep safe. Bye for now.